dear students now the next protozoan is the balantidium coli so this balantidium coli which infects the intestine of the man so balantidium coli is a large ciliated protozoan and it is the only ciliate that is capable of infecting the human beings and inhabits the cecum and ascending colon so this is the classification as uh, it belongs to phylum ciliophora and uh, family balantidae da geographically balantidium coli coli occurs worldwide so human infection occur more frequently in areas where pigs are raised and sanitation is inadequate so incidents of infection have been noted in bolivia uh, new guinea and philippines etc the disease is considered to be rare and occurs in less than 1% of the human population in its morphology uh, it's having the large trophozoic stage and uh, encysted stage where it form the cyst wall so you can see here in the diagram that its body is oval and there are presence of the cilia all over its body and there are large Uh, cilia near the mouth or cytostome there is presence of cytostome then there is presence of cytopies there is presence of one mi micronucleus and one macronucleus and contractile vacuoles and food vacuoles so all over the body cilia are present and this is the structure showing the cyst the so whole body is covered by cilia and uh, cilia near the mouth are named as the adoral cilia so anterior end that bears a groove leads to a mouth known as cytostome followed by a short funnel shaped gullet or cytopharynx then posterior end broad round bears an excretory opening known as the cytopies cyst is immobile and dominant and it is surrounded by the thick transparent cyst wall and it contains two nuclei macronucleus and micronucleus and vacuoles cilia are present in younger cyst but they are absorbed on maturity then mode of transmission is fecal and oral route so virulence factor is higher luronidase which helps to penetrate the intestinal mucosa secreted by the cyst wall then uh, it uh, just released into the intestine when the trophozoites are produced and they form the later on they form the cyst after multiplication so they multiply in the large intestine and they forming the cyst so trophozoite is the only stage which is a feeding stage then it undergoes the asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction this is a stage showing the trophozoite of balantidium coli this is a photograph then you can see here the diagram showing the trophozoite and the cyst life cycle swines are the primary reservoir host and human can also be the reservoir host and other potential animals uh, such as rodents are also acting as the host so you can see here the cyst are present in the environment this is a ancestral stage Th that is taken up by the human being here the it will releasing the uh, trophozoites trophozoites undergoing the binary fission which is the transverse division here then it will forming the um, it will it is forming the more trophozoites and then undergoing the cyst formation and again cyst is released to the environment so infection occurs when a host ingests a cyst during the consumption of contaminated water or food so once the first cyst is ingested it passes through the host digestive system so while the cyst receives some protection from degradation by the acidic environment of the stomach through the use of its outer wall it is likely to be destroyed at the ph lower than 
so allowing it to survive easier in the stomach of malnourished individual who have less stomach acid so once the cyst reaches a small intestine trophozoites are produced these trophozoites then colonize the large intestine where they live in the lumen and feed on the intestinal flora so some of the trophozoites invade the wall of colon using the proteolytic enzymes and multiply and some of them return to the lumen in the lumen trophozoites may disintegrate or undergo encystation encystation is triggered by dehydration of the intestinal contents and usually occurs in the distal large intestine but may also occur outside of the host in the feces now in its mature cyst form cysts are released into the environment where they can go on to infect a new host so here you can see the uh, di uh, cycle that this is a contaminated food contaminated food and water and here the cysts are present and this cyst is ingested by the human being entering into the alimentary canal here in the stomach then in the intestine and where it is undergoing multiplication and again it is forming the cyst and cysts are released towards the outside so this is the cyst cyst then trophozoite binary fission then encystation and then again the cyst so transmission is fecal oral route eating meat fruit and vegetables that have been contaminated drinking and washing food with contaminated water poor hygienic habits and by fecal matter from an infected animal so it causes a disease balantia diasis so trophozoites can evade the mucosa of large intestine and cause the ulceration the parasite secretes a substance called hyaluronidase enzyme which helps degrade the intestinal tissue and facilitates the penetration of the mucosa other bacteria in the intestine may enter the ulcer along with balantidium coli leading to secondary infection so ulceration of the large intestine can be viewed using the sigmo sigmoidoscopy so symptoms acute hemorrhage diarrhea ulceration to the gut wall dysentery and abdominal pain diagnosis examination of the patient stool a stool sample is collected or then a paired biopsy sigmoid scope is used to usually inspect the last sections of the large intestine you can they, these are the slides showing the presence of cyst in the stool then treatment mainly three drugs are used tetracycline metronidazole and iodoquinol then prevention treatment of carriers shedding the cyst hygienic rearing of pigs and prevention of pigs to human contact and prevention of contamination of food or water with pigs and human feces so this is the disease where the reservoir host is playing very important role in the transmission and the contaminated food and contaminated water and any other thing with the cyst is also the main cause of the transmission so we have to take preventive measures for the controlling of the disease thanks